Have you ever looked at a patch of tired earth, really looked? I mean beyond just seeing the surface, but truly observing the state of the soil, the way it feels, the way it looks, and the overall health of what's growing or rather not growing there, and wondered how to bring it back to life, how to transform that barren landscape into a thriving ecosystem, teeming with vitality and bursting with growth. It's a question that plagues many gardeners, both novice and experienced alike. That was me, staring at a sad corner of my yard. It was a space I had largely ignored, a forgotten zone that seemed determined to resist any attempts at cultivation. The plants struggled, barely clinging to life, their leaves yellowed and drooping, a clear sign of distress. They were fighting a losing battle against the harsh conditions. The ground was hard, compacted, and seemingly impenetrable. Water just ran off the surface, unable to soak in and nourish the roots below. It felt like concrete, and it lacked that rich dark color of healthy soil. Instead, it was pale and lifeless, devoid of the organic matter that gives fertile earth its vibrancy and ability to sustain life. It was clear that this soil was in desperate need of help. I could have bought a quick fix, a bag of fertilizer promising instant results, a chemical solution to a natural problem. But I wanted something more natural, something nurturing, something that would not only address the immediate symptoms, but also heal the soil from within, creating a sustainable and thriving environment. What if the answer was already in my home? What if the key to revitalizing this neglected corner lay not in a store-bought product, but in the everyday items I already had on hand? That question sent me on a journey, not to the store, bypassing the aisles of synthetic solutions and prepackaged promises, but to my kitchen, the heart of my home, a place of nourishment and creation. And as I was about to discover, a potential goldmine of soil-enriching ingredients, I started seeing the earth as a living community, a complex and interconnected web of organisms, all working together to create a thriving ecosystem, hungry for real nourishment. Not just the quick hit of chemical fertilizers, but the slow release, sustained energy of organic matter. My goal, create an environment where life would want to gather, a haven for beneficial bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms that are essential for healthy soil. Using simple, honest ingredients, the kind of things you find in nature, the kind of things that have been nourishing the earth for millennia. Nature has always taken care of itself. It's a self-regulating system, a perfect example of balance and sustainability. Leaves fall, blanketing the ground in a colorful layer of organic matter. Break down and feed the soil, enriching it with nutrients and creating a fertile foundation for new growth. Why not mimic that? Why not learn from nature's wisdom and apply its principles to my own garden? I chose that tired patch as my experiment, a testing ground for my natural soil building theories. Not just to grow plants, but to build a foundation for life, a thriving ecosystem that would sustain itself for years to come. My plan wasn't about chemicals, about masking the symptoms with artificial solutions, but about inviting nature's tiniest workers to a feast, providing them with the organic matter they needed to thrive and transform the soil from the inside out. What happened next amazed me. It was a transformation I could never have fully anticipated. Before I share what I did, let's talk about who I was trying to feed. Deep in the soil is a hidden world of billions of microbes, nature's ultimate recyclers. They break down leaves, grass, and scraps, turning them into plant food. These microbes also create air pockets and tunnels, making soil fluffy and roots strong. Their work gives healthy soil that spongy, rich texture. My experiment was simple make the microbes happy, and they do the hard work. Instead of feeding plants, I focused on feeding the life in the soil. It was about treating the root cause, a hungry soil community. My goal, wake them up and get the party started. So, what did I feed my microbe friends? Nothing fancy, just molasses from my kitchen. Molasses is pure unrefined sugar, a quick energy boost for microbes. Like us, they need energy to work and multiply. Using molasses felt gentler than chemicals and it's completely natural. It's not just sugar. It has minerals like calcium and iron, vitamins for the soil. My plan use a pantry staple, not a store-bought product. It was about being resourceful and giving back to the earth. This simple sticky syrup was my offering. I was excited to see what would happen. Making this treat for the soil was as easy as brewing a glass of sweet tea on a warm afternoon. It's a simple recipe really but the impact it can have on your garden's health is quite profound. We're essentially creating a living soil cocktail, a brew that's designed to invigorate the microbial life beneath our feet. 
The first step is to fill a 5-gallon bucket with water. I prefer to use water from my well, but tap water works just fine too. However, it's important to let the water sit for at least 24 hours to allow the chlorine to dissipate. Chlorine, while effective at disinfecting, can also harm the beneficial bacteria and fungi we're trying to cultivate in our soil. Then, the magic ingredient, unsulfured blackstrap molasses. I poured in about a cup. Blackstrap molasses is more than just a sweetener. It's a powerhouse of micronutrients and carbohydrates that act as a food source for the soil microbes. It's like giving them a shot of espresso. Next, I grabbed a long wooden stick and stirred the mixture until the molasses was completely dissolved. You want to make sure there are no clumps or globs, just a homogeneous, evenly distributed solution. This ensures that the microbes throughout the soil get an equal share of the goodness. The resulting mixture looked like weak coffee, a dark, rich, and earthy brew. But don't let the appearance fool you. This is a life-giving cocktail for the soil, teeming with potential. It's a concentrated dose of energy, ready to awaken the dormant ecosystem beneath the surface. With the bucket in hand, I carefully carried it to my chosen patch in the garden. It's important to be mindful of the weight, especially if you're working with a full five gallons. A spill now would mean wasted effort and a less than ideal distribution of the mixture. I then used a watering can fitted with a gentle sprinkler head to apply the molasses tea evenly across the soil. This ensures that the entire area benefits from the treatment, rather than just a few concentrated spots. The dark liquid soaked into the soil quickly, disappearing beneath the surface as the earth eagerly drank it in. It was a satisfying sight, knowing that the microbes were already starting to feast on the molasses. As the water disappeared, it left behind a faint, sweet, earthy smell, a subtle reminder of the life-giving process taking place below. It was a pleasant aroma, a hint of the transformation to come. It was a simple act, taking only a few minutes, but it felt deeply meaningful. It was a direct connection to the earth, a way of nurturing the soil and supporting the intricate web of life within. It felt like an invitation for life to return, a welcoming gesture to the unseen organisms that play such a vital role in the health and vitality of my garden. I made sure I didn't dump it all in one spot. That would have been too much for any single area to handle. I wanted every inch of the soil to get a taste of this sweet microbial feast, ensuring a balanced and widespread revitalization. The work was done, the soil treated, and the stage was set. Now, all that was left to do was wait and watch, to observe the subtle changes and the gradual transformation of the soil. Would the soil respond as I hoped? Would the microbes thrive and multiply, bringing new life and energy to the garden? The experiment had begun, and I was eager to see the results. It was a journey of discovery, a chance to learn more about the hidden world beneath our feet and the power of simple natural solutions. The day after feeding the soil, nothing seemed different on the surface. The ground looked the same, maybe a bit softer, or maybe that was just hope. I reminded myself, the real work was happening underground. Microbes, dormant for so long, needed time to wake up. My sugar water was a gentle alarm clock. I noticed a subtle, sweet, earthy aroma, like a forest after rain. That scent was my first sign something was happening. The microbes were starting to breathe, changing the smell of the earth. I gave the patch a light sprinkle of water and stepped back. Nature works on its own schedule. The real story was just beginning. By the third day, real changes appeared. The soil was darker, shifting from pale tan to rich brown, a sign of life. It felt soft and crumbly, no longer hard and compacted. Microbes were creating air pockets and tunnels, making a better home for roots. Then I saw earthworms, nature's plowmen, returning for the first time in years. Their presence meant the ecosystem was healing. The sweet, earthy smell was stronger now, the fragrance of healthy decomposition. I felt joy and accomplishment, no chemicals, just a simple kitchen offering. The soil was waking up. The changes were small but profound. The party had started. I couldn't wait to see what came next. One week later, the transformation was miraculous. The patch was now a hub of life, deep brown, crumbly, and moist. Even struggling weeds looked greener, and a volunteer tomato plant had sprung to life. The microbes were unlocking nutrients, feeding the plants. The area buzzed with earthworms, beetles, and spiders, a balanced ecosystem. My garden bed had gone from desert to metropolis for beneficial critters. This experiment showed me nature's resilience. The soil didn't need fixing with products, just a little encouragement. The microbes did the heavy lifting, turning dirt into a thriving foundation. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the most powerful. The soil wasn't just alive, it was joyful. 
I was amazed by the results. Nature had thrown a party. Want to give your garden a little boost? A soil party might be just the thing. It's a simple, natural way to invigorate your soil and get those microbes thriving. And the best part? You can do this in your own backyard. It's accessible, easy, and incredibly rewarding. No fancy equipment needed. This isn't about complicated setups or expensive tools. We're talking about the basics, a bucket, a watering can, and a few simple ingredients. Gardening should be accessible, and this method keeps it that way. Pick a tired patch, a spot where the soil seems lifeless, and plants struggle to thrive. This is where your soil party will make the biggest difference. We're targeting areas that need a little extra love and attention. Raised bed if you prefer a more contained environment. Raised beds are fantastic for managing soil quality and drainage, or even a container. Container gardening is perfect for small spaces or for focusing on specific plants. No matter your setup, this method works wonders. Fill a bucket with water fresh and clean. Water is the foundation of this soil-boosting elixir. Let it sit if it's tap water. This allows chlorine and other chemicals to dissipate, making it gentler on your soil microbes. We want to nourish them, not harm them. Add unsulfured blackstrap molasses. This is the secret ingredient, the food that fuels the microbial party. A few tablespoons for a watering can, a cup for a big bucket. The exact amount isn't critical, but aim for a ratio that gives the water a light brown tint. Stir until dissolved. Make sure the molasses is fully integrated into the water, creating a uniform solution. Pour the molasses water evenly over your chosen spot. Distribute it carefully, ensuring all areas receive a fair share of the microbial feast. Don't drench it, avoid creating puddles or oversaturating the soil. Just a good deep drink. You want the water to penetrate the soil, reaching the root zone and the microbial communities below. The sweet water soaks into the top inches where microbes live. This sugary treat provides them with the energy they need to thrive and multiply. That's it, you've just thrown a soil party. The work takes minutes. It's a quick and easy way to give your garden a boost without spending hours toiling away. Watch and wait, observe your plants and the soil itself, checking every few days for changes. Look for signs of increased vitality, such as greener leaves and stronger growth. Reapply every week or two during the growing season. Regular applications will help maintain a healthy microbial balance in your soil. It's not a one-time fix, but a continuous process of nurturing your soil. But a way to build a relationship with your garden, understanding its needs and responding with simple natural solutions. You'll be amazed by the results. Witnessing the transformation of your soil and the flourishing of your plants is a truly rewarding experience. This simple experiment changed how I see my garden. The ground isn't just dirt, it's a living community supporting all we see. Real magic happens when we work with nature, not against it. Nurturing soil is about giving back, participating in an ancient cycle. A healthy garden is a sanctuary for plants, insects, and our own souls. Start small, feed one patch, and watch what happens. You'll cultivate patience, wonder, and a sense of connection. The most powerful forces are often invisible. Whether restoring a house or reviving soil, it's about creating a foundation for life. So get your hands dirty, help your corner of the world come alive.